Coronaviruses are responsible for anywhere from 10 to 30 percent of the common cold seen worldwide. So you've likely had a coronavirus in your lifetime. I've likely had a coronavirus in my lifetime. Coronavirus was first identified, kind of first introduced to the world in the 1960s. And it's a family of respiratory viruses that most often infects animals, but at least four strains are known to also infect humans. This novel coronavirus or new strain, now called COVID-19, uh, is getting a lot of attention because it has demonstrated that it started in animals, then jumped to humans, and now has shown evidence of human-to-human -human transmission. Part of why some public health officials and scientists, doctors, are taking this really seriously is because of the perspective. SARS and MERS um, are part of the same coronavirus family. SARS, which hit the globe in 2002, MERS about 10 years later, both spread from their countries of origin and both had pretty high fatality rates. So we don't know how this new coronavirus strain will behave. It could be more like the common cold. It doesn't look like it'll be close to SARS or MERS, um, but anything that we don't have a track record of history on, we have to keep an uh, open mind about. You can think of outbreak, epidemic, and pandemic along the same spectrum, going from mild to moderate to more severe. An outbreak is just more cases of any type of infection um, that we would normally expect to see, usually concentrated both in geographical place and chronological time. Some years, most years in fact, influenza meets criteria for epidemic levels in the United States. And that just means it's surpassed a certain percentage circulating in the community. Pandemic is kind of an epidemic on steroids, if you will. Pandemic means that you have an outbreak of an infectious disease that has spread to many places, usually multiple countries, and has shown evidence of person-to-person -person spread or transmission within the community. When you talk about this coronavirus, global health emergency, the World Health Organization has been asked about pandemic, CDC officials have been asked about the term pandemic, and everyone has said, of course that's a possibility. Some have said we expect it to reach that. Some people have cautioned it and softened it a little and say it may reach pandemic. But um, the analysis that I really like is not to get too bogged down on language and terms um, because it doesn't really change our response to this.
So I actually think that the numbers part of this coronavirus story is one of the most interesting um, and intriguing and important. I would say that in order to interpret any number, you have to know what denominator you're talking about, right? If, um, you know, if we heard that 10 people were killed in a car accident, out of how many? Out of how many people? Out of how many days? Out of how many car accidents? All of that changes our interpretation of that number. Um, nowhere is that more important than in this story right now. Because uh, in my opinion, what's important is not the official case count or even the official death count. What's important is trying to figure out how many people have been exposed to the coronavirus, how many have been infected, how many of those infected become symptomatic, how many of those people who are infected, not just symptomatic, but infected, are actually tested, and then how many of those tested result in a positive confirmatory result, and then you can talk about severity rate and mortality rate. Mortality rate without knowing how many people have been exposed, infected, or tested, is much less important. So I caution people, whether it's here in this country or global numbers, interpret those numbers with not a grain of salt, but a chunk of salt, because what's really important is how many people we're able to test and how many of those who are tested test positive versus negative. And we don't know that yet.